Hi there, I'm Anushka, mom to my 14 month old son and today I will be talking about four of the books he's reading on um, saving the environment, conservation, deforestation, those sort of things. We are doing a homeschool co-op program which is very focused on the environment and it's called Fields and Flowers. So it's on the birds, animals, insects that live in this environment and how to care for them, protect them, learning more about them. So we've been following that up with some books at home that I've got from the local library so that he can um, you know, really embed the knowledge that he's learning from his homeschool program. So the first book I will be talking about is called The Earth Book. I do like this book because it's very simple and very tailored to his age, which has been hard to find, um, really, like in terms of nonfiction books for this age group of sort of one to two year olds. Um, as you can see, it's just got really fun, uh, simple images, clean lines, and um, like, I guess, you know, um, it's not very realistic, but he, he enjoys the pictures in here and it's got very simple text. What I don't like about it is that I think it can create a lot of guilt for children as if they are personally accountable for the state of the world which is not something that I really want to be teaching my child like I think I would like to encourage him to care for the environment around him but not feel like um, he his actions can make such a tangible difference because in reality it's really big in my opinion, big corporations that can make the most difference rather than an individual's effort on like a you know grassroots level. And I wouldn't want him to feel that the state of the environment and the world is um, up to, is a result of him not doing enough, if that makes sense. So for example, it says, I use both sides of the paper and bring my own bags to the market because I love the trees. Yep. Fair, that's that's all right and I want the owls to have a place to live so does this mean if he's not taking his own bags enough the owls won't have a phone place to live no. um, I love the fish and I want the oceans to stay blue okay um, and then we have like different things in here I ride my bike to school because I want the air to be clean yeah that's that's really nice um, I love watching things grow and I want there to be enough food for everyone. I don't know if I want him to understand such a heavy concept that there are children in the world who do not have enough food and are starving at his age. But I do like the idea of teaching children that, you know, um, they can they can make a difference in some small way and do their part in in trying to make the world a better place. So yeah, I would leave it up to you to decide how you do this book with your child and um, what you enforce out of it. So he does like pointing out all the carrots, tomatoes, strawberries, things like that in the book, broccoli. Um, we are learning a lot about fruit and veg at the moment, so he is really enjoying this book. Turning the lights on and off is obviously a thing he, at that age, you know, that they are very um, excited about doing and opening and closing the fridge. Um, and then we have things like, you know, just simple images, things that they can relate to, like the sun, um, putting things in the bin, so trash, if you're in America, um, putting things in the trash, he loves putting things in the bin. So I think this is a really fun book for this age with lots of ideas that do appeal to them and some that are maybe a bit beyond them based on your prerogative as their parents. Next, we have a book called Rewilding, which is quite advanced. Talks about habitat loss, deforestation, um, you know, uh, like heaps of quite big concepts like overfishing, commercial fishing, um, criticisms of um, rewilding projects. Is it a band aid or is it a cure? Um, there are some really cool stories in here though that may appeal more to parents and you can kind of explain in your own words to the children. There are some really fun um, illustrations like see this lynx over here Then we've got um, yeah, these big cats, predators, like it's got really nice illustrations. So I will share one story that I really like from this book about the tigers in the Sariska um, forest in India where because of poachers the, the tigers had almost been wiped out and there was a female tiger 
that um, unfortunately died. And what was even worse was that um, it had it had two cubs with her. And what was amazing was that the male tiger, the father, then appeared after the two um, the cubs lost their mother, and the father raised her, his cubs and taught them how to hunt. Sorry, that's my son. He's with his dad. Um, taught them how to hunt and protect themselves. And because of what their father had taught them, when the Sariska uh, Conservation um, you know, Reserve was then created and these tigers were brought into the reserve, they were then able to have cubs of their own and survive and their cubs then went on to have their own cubs and eventually they repopulated the reserve and there's now as many as two dozen tigers roaming around in that reserve which is which is really amazing to see you know a dad father tiger step up and play that role as the mother oh, making me teary we're talking about tigers <laughs> gosh all right then we have two more books um this community it's called green green a community gardening story which as you can imagine is about a community coming together and creating this beautiful garden for the community to then have fruits vegetables flowers and they work on it together to um, create the space for the community they live in these apartment buildings and then they reclaim the space to then create a beautiful garden for their children and um, the community to then use as like a community kitchen which is which is really cool which is a reality for like a lot of people who do live in cities and apartments and don't have you know land that is accessible and so it's really nice to see um this as is something that's quite relevant you know and relatable for like a lot of children growing up in in cities then we have love your world how to take care of the plants the animals and the planet a cleaner greener book as you can see this um even the cover of this book is cardboard it hasn't got plastic on it which I think was intentional um, and it has some very realistic images of bird houses frogs bees trees children here creating um, a little um, little environment for seeds to grow and they're gonna make their own little stone path and garden over here which is really cool. I might do something like this with my son when he's a little bit older. At this point, he's still in the mouthing phase, so I don't wanna do something like that just yet. Um, it talks about recycling and reusing things and then putting things in the trash. So I think, you know, if I were to choose between the Earth book and this one, I would probably prefer this one here because it just has the action of let's put our letter in the trash, but not let's put our litter in the trash because we want the ocean to be clean and fish to still have a home like there's a lot of loading in the earth book i think um so this is this is my thoughts on these books and this one is also a bit more realistic um that has realistic images as well as some you know illustrations in here um you know turning the light off when we're not using it as opposed to let's turn the light off because we want um you know uh the world to still be a safe space when like years from now i mean we we don't want i don't know i particularly don't want that kind of guilt and loading on my child just yet um or, or ever <laughs> um and here's some examples of things that they can create with old products so you can use a tin can and make a pencil holder. You can use a sock and make a puppet. You can use some newspaper and turn it into wrapping paper. And that's really cool ideas. Or like a yogurt container is now a pot for a plant. About how you can use some of these um, single use packaging that we have that we buy our food in and repurpose it to use it for something else. Like, you know, I've seen people also use like egg cartons as tiny little... Um, planters to do saplings and then take that and put that in the big in the in a big pot once it grows um but yogurt containers also work and then some um things that we can turn into art like we can use our imaginations to turn like a big bottle into art and these boxes into like a robot 
So really fun uh, crafty projects for kids as well and I think a good one for parents to read with their kids and then maybe actually do some of the crafts together in this book. So these are the books that my son is reading. Um, in my next video I will be discussing a book he has on nature and animals living in different habitats and also some of the food that we get from nature. Thank you.